Marston. I'm the founder and director of Free Batter Texas Women. And uh, we've got a panel tonight of those of us who are formerly incarcerated, uh, local activists and criminal justice reformers, uh, to present to you on this topic of, of ending mass incarceration. In terms of me answering why I'm here tonight, uh, the, the short answer to that would be because I, 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 why I do the work I do is because I have to. The long answer would be that 13 years ago tonight, I was driving in Shirts, Texas, so here in this area, and I'm a local gal, I went to Randolph and I went to Trinity, and uh, I drove in front of Clemens High School and a Shirts police officer had somebody pulled over for speeding, and by the time I got to FM3009, he had his lights on behind me, and uh, I pulled over into the dark business beside the, the lit up gas station instead of the gas station, and uh, that's where uh, he told me I had been speeding. I asked him how fast I had been going. He couldn't answer the question. He got angry, and uh, much like Sandra Bland's accuser, he asked me to get out of the car. He slammed me face down into the hood of my car, handcuffed me, then when his buddy showed up, he stuck his foot out in front of me and pushed me so that I fell on my face. Those charges were dismissed, but that was the first time the state of Texas called me a criminal, because let's face it, there's no presumption of innocence in this country despite the Sixth Amendment. Twelve years ago today, the Austin police found my abusive ex-boyfriend and his friend on top of me after my ex had smothered, strangled, and beat me for 90 minutes so that I was broken, blue, bruised, and bleeding. My, my uh, foot was broken. They called them off of me and they told me to stand up and put my hands behind my back. And for the past 12 years, I have been called a domestic violence offender. I spent more than nine years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice related to that original arrest where I defended myself against my batterer. My batterer had me in a stranglehold and I had to bite his arm while he had me in that stranglehold or I would not be sitting here tonight. Um, and when he loosened up that grip, I brought my head back into his face and that busted his lip. Those were the only two injuries he had. I had bruises on my back, etc. While I was in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, I, uh, the staff there froze me, broiled me without the air conditioner in the, winter, in, in the, in the um, summer, denied me medical care, blocked my outgoing mail for a year and a half, uh, put inmates in my cell with me who had assault records so that they assaulted and threatened me, and when I reported those inmates via the grievance process, they dug up a disciplinary case and uh, put me in solitary confinement or special cell restriction for a, uh, a period of time. Uh, those are just some of the indignities I suffered. While I was still in prison, I utilized the grievance system. Now, in, there is a grievance system everywhere in life, y'all, whatever your workplace is, if you go to school, the court system is a grievance system. And I wrote grievances. I filed two conditions of confinement lawsuits myself, pro se, while I was in there. I uh, wrote legislators. I wrote activists. Um, I wrote outside academics. I published while I was in prison. I was on the steering committee for the 2014 International Conference on Penal Abolition, which took place on Algonquin Territory and Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Um, and for our COPA, I helped from prison. I was writing and talking about what kind of programming we should have, having diverse presenters, uh, women, LGBTQ, make sure we have uh, had, uh, prisoners of color or persons of color on planet panels. My work was presented for me. Um, I have a PhD and I was published before I went into prison. And I published a course on this issue of wrongful arrest of bad women. I also wrote about strategies of uh, written and non-written resistance by female prisoners in TDCJ. I, and, I, and I also wrote on uh, LGBTQ issues, the conflation of sexual orientation and gender presentation in prison. There's a little bit, there's a term in TDC, I don't know if it's in the federal prisons, it's stud broad. And uh, this is a term that kind of confuses uh, women who want to present, gender present as male, with lesbians. So, um, the biggest thing, the reason I'm, I guess I'm really here is I also created Free Batter Texas Women while I was in prison. Before I got into prison, I, uh, I had heard about Free Batter Women in California 
Once I got into prison, I found out from one of these women who's my friend, Sherry Nance, uh, who's been in since 89, related to killing her batter in defense of herself and what was then her 10-month-old child, who her batter was molesting. Um, Sherry told me back around 89, 90, they had Women Against Violent Endings was a group in the Texas prisons. Those of you who are familiar with the Sin by Silence laws in California, they have a group, Convicted Women Against Abuse. Well, at that same time, there was Women Against Violent Endings. So I had originally just collected the anecdotes and uh, demographic and information and TDC number of each prisoner. I'm a writer. I have a PhD in communication. I have 29 years of professional communication experience. I've worked for two major newspapers in the state. And I thought, I'm going to write a book about this. But then I realized I needed to do something more. And that's where I started publishing, writing, writing legislators. Once I was released in July 2014, um, I began showing up at the legislature. The first time I went to the legislature was November 2014. And I didn't meet Jennifer then, but she was the speaker at the, the Texas Families Rally for Justice uh, rally that was there at the state capitol. And Tifa was one of the sponsors of that. And I was uh, still on parole then. I maxed my sentence about a year ago this month. And I was too afraid to go into legislative offices. And well, I've been in legislative offices about three more times since then. Trust me, I'm not afraid anymore. And they, uh, they invited me. Senator John Whitmire is the chair of the Texas Senate's Criminal Justice <coughs> Committee. And uh, his staff invited me to write an interim charge. So the legislature doesn't meet again until 2017, but all of these people who are seasoned criminal justice reformers can tell you this is not a time where nothing happens. This is a time where we need to be continually working with legislative staff to make things happen. So um, I wrote an interim charge for an interim study. Uh, we haven't had an interim st study on the topic of persons incarcerated related to defending themselves or children against uh, batterers or other domestic violence coerced offenses. Since uh, the, the 91 legislation, we did not get the interim study. I, I curled up in a little ball for about a week at the beginning of November when I found out. And then I went to Joe Strauss's office. He's here in town. He's the Speaker of the House. And I contacted the Lieutenant Governor's office, and I went on. I have continued uh, media outreach and publications. Uh, I talked a little bit about the piece on a, a, a completion of gender and sexual orientation. It came out in Wagadu, which is an online transnational feminist journal. Then that was turned into a book called Crossing the Borders. It's an LGBTQ uh, uh, book. I've written poetry that's appeared. One of those poems was on the death of my friend Molly Hunziger, who died on June 19, 2011. It was 105 degrees that night. It was probably about 130 degrees in her unair conditioned cell. And so we were about the same age. So I think we were about 42 or 43 at the time. Um, I, some of you may have seen, I just had a, a, a guest column up here uh, in the Express News on Saturday, uh, Bias in Prisons, Battered Women. I had a piece uh, come out in the International Criminology Journal last month that's a massive review of the state, local, uh, national, and international statistics in the area of incarceration of women and wrongful arrest of battered women. Um, I do public speaking like I'm doing today. I've spoken at local universities. I've spoken to the Harris County Domestic Violence Coordinating Committee. I did that in October. Um, I spoke on the prison show. Uh, of the, one of the resource lists in the back, the one I put together, has prisoner media. The prison show has been around since 1980, and they cover criminal justice reform issues. It's every Friday from 9 until 11 p.m., and uh, they live stream it at www.k ft.org. They also archive the shows. So I will be going to Houston again in about a week, and I'm going to be on the show again on the 22nd. Um, I spoke to the South San Antonio chapter of TIFA. Um, as, as Free Battered Texas Women, I also correspond with 21 incarcerated battered women. I got three letters this week alone. And uh, that membership builds. I always enclose three of my business cards. I tell them, pass them out. They are organizing on the inside. They're learning what time terms like self-defense and defense of third party mean. And we have about a dozen allied groups, too. Um, I put together materials like some of the handouts that are on the back table. And I'm still writing grievances, even on the outside. We've talked about uh, Ban the Box and the Second Chance Act. I had to file a complaint against a San Antonio area employer who made it really clear that I was denied a job that I was way overqualified for in education and profession because they thought I was still on parole. And when I pointed out that I had provided materials to show I was not on parole, then they had another excuse, so I filed a complaint with the EEOC. 
So that's some of the what and that's some of the things you can do. And the handouts.